as you guys can see we have a unique series coming your way now if you guys are receiving these vlogs as of right now just know that that's probably a good indicator me and paul are in the process of delivering this baby or we have already and we are now in recovery mode so this series is going to be different from all the other series. Why, you may ask? It's because I have a baby in my tummy. So with this chronic illness series, we are going to be talking about the chronic illnesses I have been dealing with and how it has affected me during pregnancy. I truly hope these chronic illness series vlogs, guys, are helping you guys and on your medical journey as well. And I definitely want to get into it and talk about how it's affected me during my pregnancy because a lot of you guys have asked and I am here to share. Guys, if you want much more specific details on our chronic illnesses, definitely check out our chronic illness series. This series will be all about my pregnancy and how it has affected all my other illnesses. So if you want more info on that though, check that out. So today's vlog, we are going to be talking about my chronic ear conditions. Yes, I don't talk about it much, but it sounds weird. A lot of people ask me, out of all your conditions, which one do you think affects you the worst? And when I think of that, which one causes me the most pain? And it would have to be my ears. So in the past, I have suffered horribly with my ears. I was born with weak ears, and a lot of doctors told my parents by the age of five, I would be deaf. But it doesn't mean since I overcame it that I didn't struggle growing up still. At the age of 14, I was also told, hey, she needs to get surgery because I had a really bad cholesteatoma. Never happened until finally I was 22, was able to save up and make it happen and got the surgery done, did, while they also had to repair my eardrums. Now because I've had past complications, I am very hard of hearing. I hear 60-50% out of this year, and I believe I hear about 70-80% out of this one. It, it can be rocky, and trust me, if you meet me in person, I am probably that person that's going to be like, what? What? what, 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 it's pretty bad, and it can be embarrassing. You may be wondering, how has this been affecting you during pregnancy? What? Uh, well, I have a couple stories to tell you guys. So if you guys haven't noticed, I do have a couple piercings. I love getting my ears pierced. I've always thought it was beautiful on people and I admire a good piercing. I feel like I would only get them in the ears, you know, to each his own. Of course, my ears are weak, so it has been a struggle. About almost two years ago, I did get my first, first piercing. This, like the bottom ones, you know, Hispanic moms like to get their baby girls piercings. I had these first and then the top pierced as well. So as you guys can see, I don't have a piercing here, but I have one here. Literally in the beginning of pregnancy, I had to take this piercing out. When you are a chronic illness warrior, a spoonie out there, your health starts acting up, your body's gonna give off signs and sadly my body goes straight to my ears. It tells me it literally will reject anything and everything. In the beginning of this pregnancy, I actually had to take out one of my piercings because it got infected. And guys, I got these pierced two years ago and they still haven't healed. They're not healed whatsoever. If you guys can tell, this one is a little red. I think since we're at the end of pregnancy, I'm stressed. It's coming out through my ears. And if this doesn't get any better soon, I'm going to have to take this piercing out next. Now, and then you guys do see these piercings here. I got them pierced exactly about a year ago. You know, I wanted to do something to make me happy. So I got these pierced and they still haven't healed. I was told, I don't know if it's true or not. I was told that when it comes down to new piercings, it could take max up to six months. Yeah, two years and they still haven't healed. My body, my body fights me, man. And sometimes when you're a chronic illness warrior, you gotta give up stuff that you love and you know if you're having better health conditions, you would go for. When it comes down to my ear conditions, I do see a neurotologist. A neurotologist is like what Paul likes to say, a specialist of a specialist of a specialized. I know it's confusing. It is an ENT doctor who specializes more in the cranium, the brain, since the ears and brains are very close to each other. My neurotologist sadly has given me the news that, you know, 
from all the surgeries that I've had in the past, which have been a lot. When it comes down to ear, my ears, I've probably have had like five, six surgeries on my ears, both. So I did started developing an ear issue. There is a term for it. I just do not know. I am sorry, but this is the best way I could describe the condition. Pretty much, I have restless leg syndrome in my ears. You may be like, what does that even mean? So when I mean restless leg syndrome, it's like the blood doesn't flow properly in my ears. And when it is not flowing well, and it only happens when I'm sleeping, it is very painful. It feels like as if all the blood has rushed to my ear and it's staying there and it's just throbbing. I know that sounds weird, but it's the same feeling as if I was hanging upside down. You know, that pressure right there, it's like I just feel, feel pure pressure in my ears. And I was told sadly it's because of all the surgeries I have gotten. So in the past, I was on blood thinners to prevent that discomfort from happening because I would wake up in agony, so I would take the blood thinner at night to help it flow correctly and properly. So during pregnancy, this is ha ugh, this has affected me horribly, and it can be bothersome. For a whole week straight, I remember that nonstop I couldn't sleep because I was just waking up to the pressure feeling from both ears. And it's not easy. You may be like, oh, well, then turn to the other side. Well, the baby likes to be on one unique side. I am not kidding. So I'm like limited on movement. I can't really move my head. It's so painful. A lot of people may ask, what helps this? I have still not found something to help this issue. You know, even when I was on blood thinners, it didn't really help much. It's just sadly, like my doctor says, a side effect from surgeries. So... It's something I just got to deal with and try to put up with and do what I can to be comfortable. I have seen many doctors about this and the best advice I've gotten was, well, just switch to the other side. So that's what I do. Alrighty, guys. So that is it for today's vlog or today's vlog of the week. And I truly hope this has helped you guys and possibly making a decision if being pregnant and having these certain conditions work out for you. Guys, once again, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. It truly means the world to us. It helps us spread so much more awareness and, once again, helps educate others. Also, do not forget to check out our other social media platforms, such as Orion's Instagram. You guys are probably seeing some updates here and there. And as well as our Patreon. Patreon is definitely getting the inside scoop of what's going on. They were probably the first ones to know we went into labor. So check that out, guys. Also, guys, do not forget to check out our baby Amazon registry. You know, the baby's officially here. So if you guys want to send last minute gifts and helpful tips and tricks, that would be amazing. So guys, this is where we end it. Once again, keep up with our journey and we cannot wait to talk more about how everything labor and delivery went. So guys, for now, adieu and goodbyes.